So we've just talked about UML class diagrams, got started on them. One of the key things to consider when it comes to class diagrams and how we build them is the fact that we're in the accounting domain. Now accounting has developed what's called the REA model. This is the model for designing databases that is endorsed by the AICPA and that has been used in describing ERPs and various accounting systems now for well over 20 years. So what do we mean when we say REA? Well, we've got resources. So these are the assets that the organization controls the assets of interest to the domain we're investigating. Then we've got events. So these events are going to be activities associated with the various business processes that we're investigating. And then we have agents. So the agents are going to be people or organizations associated with these activities. So going back to our basic notation, we've got, so we've got our resources, events, and agents. These are all basically classes. So each of those is the class. And then if we think about relationships between these, these are going to be the associations. And we'll recall that the associations basically describe our relationships. All right, so we've got classes. resources, events, and agents, and we've got associations. And one last thing to keep in mind is events can actually be related to themselves. So we can have associations between events. So how do we go about using REA? Well, we're going to use REA to design our class model. And then our database. So the first thing we're going to do is identify our events. what are the key business activities that take place in our business process. So for these events, what classes or entities are associated? And as you think about what the events are, you'll think more about what the relationships between these classes are. And then from there, we can start diagramming, starting with the classes, and then the associations. And this is going to be in a UML class diagram. From there, we define the class attributes. Basically, what are the pieces of information that we need to collect about each class in our model? And then from there, we can continue into uh, creating our database. objects. And these will include tables, fields, relationships, etc. So let's talk a little bit about the events 
that we want to model. What do we mean when we say an event? Well, when we as accountants typically think of a business event, we think of an economic event. And an economic event is basically something that is going to have an immediate impact on the financial statements. So we make a sale to a customer. We're going to recognize that sale and then book an accounts receivable. So we hit those two accounts, our financial statements are immediately impacted. But we have a number of other kinds of events that can take place. General business events. So these are some things that might add value to the organization, but not directly impact the financial statements right now. Now we still want to record them. So some examples would be hire a new employee, enter into a new contract with a vendor or a customer, announce a dividend even is a business event that is not going to impact the financials until the actual date of the dividend recognition. So all kinds of different business events need to be recorded in the accounting system even though they don't hit the financial statements directly at this point in time. Let's think now about the UML classes. And these are also the equivalent to the database entities. that we will create. And these UML classes can represent all three components of the REA model. Okay, all three components. So events, agents and remember agents can be internal to the organization and can also be external and the resources the way these typically map out our events are typically going to be your transaction information. Transaction related information. Agents are the actors taking part in the event. And then the resources are going to be the assets used to execute the event. Let's think about how these relationships can be set up. Class, associations, so let's think about how things can be associated in the REA model. We can have a direct association or relationship and that would be something like a sale is directly associated with a customer. A sale is directly associated with the inventory item being sold. We also have indirect relationships. So if we think about it, the relationship between customer and inventory 
And remember, we're thinking about this from the perspective of the selling organization. So the relationship between our customer and our inventory is indirect through the sale. So in other words, our customer is not going to be associated with our inventory unless we make a sale to them. So that's an important consideration when designing databases and it's a real key benefit of the REA model. So in the REA model, direct associations are almost always resource to event and event to agent resource To agent, on the other hand, almost always indirect. So any relationship between the resource and the agent is almost always going to be indirect through some type of event. So getting back to these associations, we can think of the class diagram as a graphical view of a database's contents and how they're associated. So multiplicity becomes a key consideration. We've talked a little bit about that. But it's worth thinking about again, you know, one to one, one to many. many to many. So when we develop a class model and for this purpose you know the entity relationship diagrams discussed in the uh, discussed in the appendix are similar. So the boxes represent entities or classes. Lines between classes represent associations. or relationships. Notations on either end of the lines represent multiplicity And you'll also hear, hear this referred to as cardinality. So some examples are the one or many. 
zero to ma or many, one and only one, etc. So let's think about an example, real simple example, where we've got sales We've got an inventory item, that we're selling. We've got salespeople. We've got customers. We've got cash receipts. We've got bank accounts. Each sale is going to be for an inventory item, is going to be recorded by a salesperson, and recorded to a customer. Now let's say the customer pays the salesperson for the sale at some point in the future. Well, we're going to have a cash receipt that cash receipt is associated uh, with the salesperson and that cash receipt will eventually make its way to our bank account. So we've got a sale that has a salesperson and a customer associated with it dealing with our inventory. We also have a cash receipt and that cash receipt is also associated with the sale itself. So we're going to recognize which sale this cash receipt is associated with. You know, let's say the customer stops by and pays for it a couple days later. How would we depict the multiplicities in this? Well, every sale is going to be for one or more inventory items, right? So we'll have one star, but an inventory item may not be sold or it may be sold in many sales. There you go. Zero to this would be um, a one, um, a many to many relationship with a one on the inventory side and a zero to many uh, on the sales side. A salesperson could be associated with zero, maybe they're not a very good salesperson, or many sales. Each sale, however, is going to be associated in our business with one and only one salesperson. Likewise, a customer may make zero or many. We might make zero or many sales to a customer, uh, but each sale is going to be associated with one and only one customer. So we go down and uh, look at the cash receipt side of things as well. We're going to have similar relationships. A cash receipt is going to go to one and only one bank account and the bank account may have zero to many cash receipts going to it. Customer may never pay or may eventually make many payments but for each cash receipt it will be associated with one and only one customer. Likewise a salesperson may have customers that never make payments up to customers that make many payments but each cash receipt payment will be associated with one and only one salesperson. So there we have our multiplicities set up in a fairly simple sales process diagram. This would be a, a simple first stage version of the class model and what we would do from here is start expanding each class to determine what the attributes are and we'll do that next.